got out of prison. For some prisoners, the sense of freedom never came again, even if they did get to see the sun. But I'm free! Free at last! He shouted to the high rafters of the Colorado house. And I have important things to do. I have so many promises to keep. Chapter 48 When he came back downstairs to say goodbye to his mom, he had discarded the rubber mask. He'd worn it on most of the drive from Florence to Aspen, but it probably wasn't wise to push his luck too far. The same could be said of being here at the house, except that few people knew his mother stayed here, and he did need the money after all, needed it for his plan, to make all his nightmares come true. He snuck up on Miriam, whom he had hogtied to his father's old lounge chair in the family room, right in front of the twelve-foot-high fireplace. God, how many memories were here, his father screaming at him until his veins looked like they would burst the general striking him so many times he lost count, and Miriam never saying a word, pretending that she didn't know about the beatings, the tongue lashings, the years of constant abuse. Boo, mommy, Kyle said as he popped up behind the old girl. He wondered if she remembered how he used to do this when he was just a little boy, five or six years old at the most. Boo, mommy, pay attention to me, please. Well, I'm through with the bulk of my business here in Colorado. I'm a wanted man, you know, so I'd best hit the road. Oh, dear, you're shaking like a leaf. Listen, sweetie, you're perfectly safe here in this house, this fortress of yours. Alarms everywhere, even a snowmelt system on the walk and driveway. He leaned in close to her, smelled lavender, and it was like reliving a nightmare of things past, things gone terribly, terribly wrong in his life. I'm not going to murder you, for God's sake, is that what you were thinking? No, 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 I want you to watch what I do from now on. You're an important witness for me. I'm working to heap honor on you and Dad, too. Speaking of which, tell me one thing. Did you know that he struck me almost every day when I was a boy? Did you know that? Tell me that one thing. It will stay between the two of us. I won't tell Oprah or anything like that. No memoirs from me. I'm no James Fry or Augustine Burroughs. It took her nearly a minute to get the words out. Kyle, I didn't... I didn't know. What are you talking about, anyway? You always made things up. He smiled down at her. Ah, that's a relief. Then he pulled out a Beretta, one of the guns Mason Wainwright had left for him in his car. Change my mind, Mom. Sorry. I've wanted to do this for so long. I've ached to do it. Now watch this. Watch the little black hole at the end of the barrel. You see that? Tiny eternal abyss? Watch the hole. Watch the hole. Watch the abyss. And... Bang! He shot his mother right between the eyes. Shot her a couple of times for good measure. Then he left a few clues behind for the investigators who would show up at the house eventually. Clue number one. In the kitchen, a half-finished bottle of Arthur Bryant's barbecue sauce. Clue number two. Propped on the bedroom dresser, a Hallmark card with no handwritten message. Not easy clues, but clues all the same. Something for the hunters to go on if they were any good at their jobs. If Alex Cross was one of those hot on his trail, anyway. Catch me if you can, Dr. Detective. Figure out all the puzzles and the murders will stop. But I doubt that's what is going to happen. I could be wrong, but I don't think anybody could catch me twice. Chapter 49 when Bree Stone arrived at work on Monday morning, the phone on her desk was already ringing. She set down an empty Slim Fast can, she downed two on the way to the office, and snatched up the receiver. She'd been thinking about Alex, but now that nice thought was gone. 
Bree? It's Brian Kitzmiller. Listen, I have something pretty neat to show you. Something pretty neat, Kitz? What might that be? A new game for your Wii? You're a piece of work, you know that? She shrugged her work bag back onto her shoulder. I can be there in a few minutes. Not necessary. Stay right where you are. Do you happen to be near a computer? Of course I am. Who isn't nowadays? As soon as she was online, Kitz directed her to a site called SerialTimes.net. Bree rolled her eyes as she brought up the site. What now? The home page was a crowded and sloppy-looking collection of thumbnail images, unofficial updates, and actual news items. Really sick, gross stuff. Right up there with the worst she'd seen. The most prominent item was a red-bordered box with the headline, Exclusive. Don't miss this. Message from DCAK. Click here. And I'm supposed to believe this is for real? She asked. Then added, is it, Kits? Just click it. Then you tell me. The next window had a black background with a short message in the same white typewriter font as the killer's original blog, which was one of hundreds of leads she had followed that didn't seem to go anywhere. The familiar look of the site wasn't what definitely answered Bree's question, though. It was the two images pasted in at the top of the screen. A small Iraqi flag and a bright green X-Files X. Symbols from the first two homicides. Yeah, they seem to say. It's me. Those two items aren't public knowledge yet, are they? Kitzmiller asked. Am I right? Bree shook her head as if he could see her, then mumbled, No, they aren't, Kits. We've kept them to ourselves. She was already reading the message below. The latest mind blower. Imitation is the sincerest of flattery. Charles Caleb Colton I'm setting the record straight for everybody who cares or ought to care about these things. That piece of shit work out at the George Washington Memorial Parkway? Someone else did that, not me. I'll take the flattery, but don't try to pin that one here, because I don't want it. I mean, Nixon just copycatted what I did at the Riverwalk didn't even have the nerve to show his face. Plus, the work itself was amateurish, not worthy of me or those I model myself on. FedEx Field, that one was yours truly. Took some balls to get in and out of there. Imagine making a kill in a closed-in public area like that. Make no mistake, there is only one DCAK. When it's me, you'll know it. You'll know because I'll tell you. And the work will be done with some imagination and flair. Give me a little respect. I think I've earned that much. At least now the police have someone they can catch. This imitator. Isn't that right, Detective Bree Stone? Because you're not even close to catching me, are you? Keep on living, fuckers. DCAK. For the next few seconds, Bree stood there, shaking her head back and forth. Alex had been right about the Parkway murders. And probably everything else. Chapter 50 Plus, DCAK had used her name. Bree finally sat back in her chair and tried to process that little nugget. She couldn't believe how brazen and arrogant this prick was, and how completely messed up. And scary. Bree? You still there? Brian Kitzmiller asked over the phone. Yeah, I'm here. Just having a depressed cop moment. That was pretty neat, all right. You okay? Other than the obvious? She focused on her hands, which were shaking only a little bit. Yeah, kids. Thanks for asking. It's creepy, but it makes sense to me. He's probably a total junkie for his own coverage. Of course he knows who I am. And of course he knows about Alex. He's watching us, kids. In one way, that's good news, isn't it? We wanted to make sure we were in the same communication stream as the killer. I think we're there. You think? Bree's mind was racing with all kinds of questions. When was this posted? 
11.20 last night. It's already burning up the chat rooms. It's everywhere, and I mean everywhere. That might explain these calls. She picked up the stack of pink message slips already in her inbox. The top one was from Channel 7 News. Listen, I need a name to work with. Something solid. Whose site is this? Still working on that. I've got an IP address, and I'm checking all the major registries. With any luck, I'll have a name for you soon. Operative word, luck. I hear you. Soon is good, though. Thanks, kids. We need you on this one. Yeah, I agree. You definitely do. I wonder who he models himself after. You got any ideas? No, but I bet Alex will. Bree hung up, then tried Alex and Samson. She reached voicemail for both of them and left the same message. Hey, it's me. Something just came up. Another posted message from our audience killer, now signing off with the shortened form DCAK. I'm moving on it as soon as I have an address. I hope one of you will get this before then, but I'm lining up a backup unit in the meantime. Call me ASAP. Bree knew she'd work better with her partners than with a couple of uniformed cops, but the second she had a name and address, it would be go time. DCAK wanted to know her better. Well, he just might get his wish soon. Chapter 51 I saw the light on my phone flashing, but I didn't answer calls during therapy sessions, so I let it go for the moment, and then I worried about it. Who was that I saw on my way in here? Anthony DeMeo was asking. I had to juggle my client schedules around some to accommodate my new lifestyle. Another cuckoo clock like me? I smiled at Anthony's usual irreverence. Neither of you is cuckoo. Well, maybe a little. Well, she may be crazy, a little crazy, but she sure is good looking. She gave me a smile. I think it was a smile. She's shy, right? I can tell. He was talking about Sandy Quinlan, my school teacher patient. Sandy was attractive, a good lady, maybe a little cuckoo, but who wasn't these days? I changed the subject. Anthony certainly wasn't here to talk about my other patients. Last time you started to tell me about your army unit's push toward Basra, I said. Can we talk about that today? Sure. He shrugged. That's what I'm here for, right? You fix cuckoo clocks. After Anthony DeMeo left, I checked my voicemail. Bree. I caught up with her on her cell. Good timing, she said. I'm in the car with Samson. We'll come get you. Guess what? It looks like you were right again. Must get boring. What was I right about? Copycat. On the GW Parkway with those kids. That's what DCAK says anyway. Says he did FedEx Field, but not the two murders on the overpass. Well, he would probably know. I met Bree and Samson on 7th Street and climbed into the back of her Highlander. Where are we going? I asked as she pulled out in a hurry. Bree explained as she drove, but I had to interrupt her halfway through. Hold on, Bree. He used your name? He knows about you too? What are we doing with that? Nothing for now, she said. I'm feeling pretty special, though. How about you? You feeling honored? Samson shrugged at me in a way that said he'd already had the same conversation with her and obviously with the same result. Bree showed no fears. At least I'd never seen any. By the way, Bree said, he claims he models himself after people. Any ideas on that? Kyle Craig, I said. It just came out. Uh, let me think about it some. Kitzmiller had provided Bree with the name Braden Thompson, a systems analyst with a firm called CapTech Engineering. We double parked outside CapTech's dull, modern looking building, then took the elevator up to the fourth floor. Braden Thompson? Bree asked the receptionist and held up her MPD badge and card. The woman picked up her phone, her eyes still on Bree's creds. 
I'll see if he's available. No.